my dad's way of encouraging me was different. He would always put me down. You're not as strong as me, Chris, and you'll never be. <laughs> but we must remember one thing. At the end of the day, we are all soldiers. The finest soldiers will get whichever kind of a wound, but they will walk to the last blood. That is what every man should do. Yo, welcome to the Straight Up Talk, where, where I provide for you impactful and insightful content. So I'm your host, Sam Mbogo, and you guys, I have a wonderful guest today, and uh, a very deep guy, I may say. <laughs> so, it's Mr. Chris Oteno. For you guys, okay, I know many of you maybe haven't heard him, I don't know, I don't know if maybe people have heard of you, but I can tell you, I listened to him when doing, uh, I was taking some photos of, for some event, yeah? Mm. And I listened to what you're sharing, and honestly, you are so deep. <laughs> you're talking about, because uh, now, today I want us to talk about... Um, just being a, being a man, being a responsible good man, just growing up as a man. And I was hearing you share some stories about your story fasting, about how you grew up to be the man you are today, responsible, growing up, how you, become a, how you became a sergeant, yeah? Major. And uh, a major yeah. is even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so it's even bigger. But I was, like, I was like, in my mind, I was just like, like, this is a conversation. You know, us as young guys, really, if you are meeting up as other young guys, mm -hmm. we don't have deep conversation that of, of that or that kind yes. of conversation it looks like you need to get to a like people have to grow older to have such conversation right. for most people because that's when they get they really try to work on themselves at that time right. so now i listen to you and i was like this is a conversation that really needs to reach the us young guys because right. even for me when i was listening to you i told you i was i got i get a bit emotional when i'm hearing such stories of people who who've overcome and know and i know the process was hard from what i was hearing yes so it was really breathtaking and hard of you. I think what you're doing is a good job and I think it can, can really impact many of us. So we start by, so you can introduce yourself, who you are, what you do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you, Sami. My name is Chris Otieno. I am a mentor and I wear quite a number of many hats. Yeah. I mentor young children, young boys. I mentor mothers who bring up sons. You know, bringing up sons is not easy. Mm. I mentor men, your caliber. I mentor men, my caliber dads, with the responsibilities. And I have a lot of talks in schools, in universities, in churches, in men's gatherings. I, I do all this because I feel intricately, inherently deep in me that this story has got to be shared out. I'll tell you one thing, Sam. Men don't talk. Mm. But men are suffering out here. Mm. If you get to listen to men, if you get to get them to speak, you will know that a lot of us have passed through stuff that needs to be shared with other men who are coming through uh, the, the journey of masculinity because some of them need to be prepared the journey is not soft the journey is rough rough some of us don't finish our journey some of us fall off but we must remember one thing at the end of the day we are all soldiers and the finest soldiers they'll get whichever kind of a wound but they will walk to the last blood that is what every man should do anything any problem that comes to you you need to put it in front of you face it like a man if it brings you down, you find a way to get up. You get up and move on. And every time you go down and move on, that is a lesson learned. And that lesson learned, you must be courteous or generous enough to share it with the men who are behind you. Because they need to listen to that. Mm. That's why I feel so passionately when I talk about my journey. That's why I feel so passionately talk, talking to other men. Just letting them know what I went through. Mm. What I say would help somebody here or another man there. Yeah. So, somebody to tell you about my story, you will think that it's an, it's an extraction from Guinness Book of Records, how me and my father related. Mm. It was a tough journey, but it's cyclical, cyclical in that when I was young, my dad had all these instructions to give to me. And my dad was three times what you see in terms of voice projection, in terms of body size, my dad was also three times what you see now. And my dad was a, a, a very strong man. He would uh, you'd make an order, you'd have no choice but to obey what he said, all right? And I would remember one of uh, my closest moments with my dad was when he wanted me to do my homework. We had this mathematical book known as Mathemat the Book Mathematics. He'd come tell you, Chris, come here, take that book, opens up a page, picks up any page of the book, tells you do that. He didn't even care to know whether we had done that in class or not done in that class, because in school we had syllabus. And syllabus, the way it was meant to flow. Yeah. He didn't care about that. Just say, come here. Do this homework. You do it. Give it to him. He'd mark. Not that marking from his brain, no. he take the cancer book. And, you know, mark from the answer book. If you're wrong, you're wrong. And you don't explain. Just tell you've gotten three out of 20. So you're doing nothing in school. And you oh. keep quiet. But then, 
that motivated me. And I want to tell you some. Mm. I was very poor academically. Mm. I was this guy who did number 143 out of 147. Time in, time out. And I was used to that. But then this challenge I got from my father. This challenge I got from the, the voice of other men who were in the academics. For example, I had a teacher by the name of Mr. Givenji. May God rest his soul in eternal peace. These were the guys who made my life change. Like I told you, lots of bullets faced me in my education. Mm. I was hit with so many bullets. But the biggest bullets to me were those bullets that would make me number 143. But I still walked and stood. And in this practice from my father, not well structured, with a change of curriculum from my, change of teaching style from my Mr. Gideon, math teacher who said, henceforth I'm going to mark the formula I use and get it to the answer and not the answer. Some these are the turning points for me. Mm -hmm. And now this is what I want to say. These are the things that turned me from the timid guy who was suffering from the thought of rejection, from the thought of unappreciation by my father to the kind of man that I am today who can speak boldly and who can make myself appreciated by what I say from experience. So my real story goes this way, son. My dad was in the military and we lived most of the time he wasn't there. Because military stuff is not done in the house. It's done outside there. Yeah. Miles and miles away. Outside the nation, within the nation, outside the county, outside the provinces. And he'd come once in a while. And every time he came, it was difficult to relate to him because he was a stranger. We didn't know him. We knew mom. Mom was the man, the mother and the mother for us yeah. in the house. Because she would spend all the time with us. She trained us kitchen stuff. I can cook, I can do anything in the kitchen because mom gave me this. My dad, what he gave to me was a respect for authority. Mm. Because that is what a man should do. That's what a man should bring in the house. When you are present in your house as a man and speak authority, then your children like yourself, Sam, we learn that above me, there is authority which I must respect. That's how you learn to respect the policeman. That's how you learn to pay your taxes. Yeah. That's how you learn to respect your teachers. Mm. That's how you learn to respect guys in church. Because the authority modeled by, the, by your father in the house. Mm. So my dad's way of encouraging me was different. He would always put me down. You're not as strong as me, Chris, and you'll never be. Because <laughs> I was this guy who sleep very early. <laughs> he said you'll never be. Never be. So I was this kind of guy who sleep very early. And yeah. wake up very late, yeah. And every time I woke up, I had to go through some, some, some tradition yeah. to, to get to be who I am, right? Uh, but things changed and I grew up. I decided to go into my dad's career, security. And I went to it. And I tell you, I excelled. And I did not excel because I was good. I excelled because I wanted to prove what my father was saying is wrong. I wanted to prove my dad, dad, I am not what you think I am. I am different. And I'm happy to say where I'm seated. I proved that I was man enough. Mm. And by the time my father got to retire and, and went to live back in, in, in our rural, rural home, things were different. Like I told you when I, was began, was when I began, he was the one who gave instructions. But by the time he went for it, I was the one who gave instructions. Because that had trained me. It gave me my education. I had done well, uh, done poorly and well. By the time I was leaving school, I was an excellent student. I was, I was school captain both in primary and secondary school. And that propelled me into my next career. So by the time my dad went home, I was the one giving instructions. Dad, I would like one, three, five items done. Mm -hmm. maybe, th maybe the best thing, I, the fair thing I would do is ask him, what do you think about that? And it gave me fatherly advice, which I really would appreciate. For example, if we're doing a construction, the cost of material, who, which food need to get, because he used to them, used to them, as they like, like the ones I'm used to, and he would supervise the whole process. So you can imagine the transition from this dad fearful boy to dad ultimate son, who would speak to him not the way I would think I'd speak to my dad when I was young different. And all this was created by his absence, by his presence, by his challenges, mm. and the career that I took into emulating, and the quest to become better than my dad. Because he always said, my son, I want to be better than <coughs> me when you grow up. And actually, I tell you that. Oh, he said that after? He, he said okay. that, yes. Okay. I want you to be better than me. Yeah. Now when his energy was going down, okay, okay. and you seeing himself going back to Moshapani. So we needed the family to have a pillar. Mm. And of course, my dad had chosen his pillar, and I would see that pillar was me. So it was my responsibility to rise, rise up to the occasion. Good thing now, Sam, he told me one thing, Chris, responsibility. Do you know that word? And I told him, yeah, dad, I know the word. He told me, 
how many, how many, how many parts can you divide the word responsibility to? I told him I have no idea. He told me two. Mm. Response and ability. And ability. When you combine the two, it becomes responsibility. Mm. So what that meant is that, Chris, I want you to have the ability to respond to any situation that comes to you so that you act significantly to respond to that situation. Do you mm. know how heavy that was? Yeah. So Sam, I have grown up knowing that I am this man who will respond significantly to any situation that will come to me. Any situation, I will respond, respond significantly. Now let me turn the whole story around. That was my father. Now let's look at me now, yeah. being now the father, taking up my father's roles. Mm -hmm. And I have two kids. One is 18 now and the other one is eight. The first one is a boy, the second one is a girl. Sam, I'll tell you for sure, and free of charge, that dad is destiny. The father is destiny in the life of a growing young boy. Mm -hmm. Father is destiny to the growing young girl. What do I mean by this? Someone your father is present in your life. Father will put confidence in you. Father will put identity in you. Father will give you height. Height. Your life. Mm -hmm. How far you can scale. How far you can scale. Okay. Mom will give you self-confidence, not self-esteem. Self mm. Mom will teach you how to relate. So in the presence of the both of them, Sam, you grow up to be this man who can relate. I can marry and make my marriage run right because I can connect the dots that I involved in marriage because my mom, nine months, three years, taught me to connect and relate. Mm. My dad, teaches me confidence, respecting authority. Stand up, speak like all the stereotyping. You, you, men don't cry. Men don't do what? Give it to you by a father. Mm. When you take that, you become confident. So what, is the, what are the struggles of the young men nowadays? Mm. So I mean, you look at Gen Z and millennials, we have a lot of differences in these people. How they perceive things and how they look at things. I can tell you free of charge, Gen Z are more focused in financial security. They are more focused in technology. Mm, yeah, you would see right now, any Jay-Z, son or daughter, they have an iPhone 14. Mm. But in my age right now, <laughs> Too much I would use that money for something. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. use that money for something more, you know, that yeah. can multiply in the, in the future. But for them, it's technology. You don't blame them for that. So the, the difficult thing is that my generation, Mm. Gen Z, millennial, and all the generations in there, they don't understand each other. We don't speak to each other in the eras. But the bottom line is, that as a father, I need to understand that when I'm raising up my son, I am investing in that boy to be able to be an investment for me in the next generation. Mm. If I provide the right education for my son now, he'll be able to fit in the next generation with the demands of that generation, and I'll be a proud father. But when I'm an absent father, son, there are lots of things that happen in the life of that boy. Mm -hmm. First, they miss a, a role model, to model masculinity. Mm -hmm. For example, when it comes to when it comes to Valentine Day, mm -hmm. you would not know that our sons and daughters are watching and watching clearly, not just watching, watching clearly. Yeah. If I showed up in my house with a bunch of flowers and gave that to my wife, hey honey, happy Valentine's Day, with a hug, with something like that, the boy will see this is what I'm supposed to do. The daughter will see, this is what a man should do to me, and this is how I should behave when the man does that. Mm. So in totality, if you look at that in, 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 in a cocoon, you find that when the lady grows up, she's able to step back and let the man be where the man is supposed to take that responsibility. Mm. And the boy is able to stand up to what is required of a man. Mm. But in the absence of a father, yeah. a role model, a father who does not meet up the roles of a masculine person in the right way, then as a son, you miss it. And you miss it so badly. So that when you grow up, you're having a lot of challenges. I can't manage my finances. I can't avoid peer pressure because I don't have the values, the core values in me around her. I doubt the deity of Jesus Christ because the religiously or my spiritual development, one way or the other, mm. was amputated or was disrupted with. I don't have that person to introduce me to Christ. I don't have that person to introduce, to introduce me the economy of money. I don't have that person to introduce me the respect of authority. I don't have that person to teach me that relationships are supposed to be nurtured. And I can love somebody and that person cannot love me back. And if they cannot love me back, 
that it is not for me to resort to, to dealing with not being loved back by being violent. 